1월 17일 쉬운 영어로 맥체인 성경통독 오늘 말씀은 창세기 18장 마태복음 17장 느에미아서 7장 사도행전 17장 말씀입니다. 
what if only 40 are found there? He said, if there are 40, I will not do it. Then Abraham said, Lord, please don't be angry with me. Let me speak. What if only 30 can be found there? He answered, if I find 30, I will not do it. Abraham said, I have been very bold to speak to the Lord. What if only 20 can be found there? He said, if I find 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, Lord, please don't be angry with me. Let me speak just one more time. What if only 10 can be found there? He answered, if I find 10, I will not destroy it. When the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left. And Abraham returned home. Matthew chapter 17 After six days Jesus took Peter, James, and John the brother of James with him. He led them up a high mountain. They were all alone. There in front of them his appearance was changed. His face shone like the sun. His clothes became as white as the light. Just then Moses and Elijah appeared in front of them. Moses and Elijah were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters. One will be for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While Peter was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them. A voice from the cloud said, This is my son, and I love him. I am very pleased with him. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they were terrified. They fell with their faces to the ground. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. They came down the mountain. On the way down, Jesus told them what to do. Don't tell anyone what you have seen, he said. Wait until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The disciples asked him, Why do the teachers of the law say that Elijah has to come first? Jesus replied, That's right. Elijah is supposed to come and make all things new again. But I tell you, Elijah has already come. People didn't recognize him. They have done to him everything they wanted to do. In the same way, they are going to make the Son of Man suffer. Then the disciples understood that Jesus was talking to them about John the Baptist. When they came near the crowd, a man approached Jesus. He got on his knees in front of him. Lord, he said, have mercy on my son. He shakes wildly and suffers a great deal. He often falls into the fire or into the water. I brought him to your disciples. But they couldn't heal him. You unbelieving and evil people. Jesus replied. How long do I have to stay with you? How long do I have to put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus ordered the demon to leave the boy, and it came out of him. He was healed at that moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private. They asked, why couldn't we drive out the demon? He replied, because your faith is much too small. What I'm about to tell you is true. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, it is enough. You can say to this mountain, move from here to there. And it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. They came together in Galilee. Then Jesus said to them, the Son of Man is going to be handed over to men. They will kill him. On the third day he will rise from the dead. Then the disciples were filled with deep sadness. Jesus and his disciples arrived in Capernaum. There the people who collect the temple tax came to Peter. They asked him, doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Yes, he does, he replied. When Peter came into the house, Jesus spoke first. What do you think, Simon? He asked. Who do the kings of the earth collect taxes and fees from? Do they collect them from their own children or from others? From others, Peter answered. Then the children don't have to pay, Jesus said to him. But we don't want to make them angry. So go to the lake and throw out your fishing line. 
Take the first fish you catch. Open its mouth. There you will find the exact coin you need. Take it and give it to them for my tax and yours. Nehemiah chapter 7, the wall had been rebuilt. I had put up the gates at the main entrances to the city. The people who guarded the gates were appointed to their positions. So were the musicians and the levites. I put my brother Hanani in charge of Jerusalem. Ananiah helped him. Ananiah was commander of the fort that was by the temple. Hanani was an honest man. He had more respect for God than most people do. I said to Hanani and Ananiah, Don't open the gates of Jerusalem until the hottest time of the day. Tell the men who guard the gates to shut them before they go off duty. Make sure they lock them up tight. Also appoint as guards some people who live in Jerusalem. Station some of them at their appointed places. Station others near their own homes. Jerusalem was large. It had a lot of room. But only a few people lived there. The houses hadn't been rebuilt yet. So my God gave me the idea and encouraged me to gather the people together. He also encouraged me to gather the nobles and officials together with them. He wanted me to list them by families. I found the family history of those who had been the first to return. Here is what I found written in it. Nebuchadnezzar had taken many Jews away from the land of Judah. He had forced them to go to Babylon as prisoners. Now they returned to Jerusalem and Judah. All of them went back to their own towns. Nebuchadnezzar was king of Babylon. The leaders of the Jews included Zerubbabel, Joshua, Nehemiah, Azariah, Ramiah and Nahamani. They also included Mordecai, Bilshan, Mispereth, Bigvi, Nehum and Bana. Here is a list of the men of Israel who returned home. There were 2,172 from the family line of Parash. There were 372 from Shepathia. There were 652 from Ara. There were 2,818 from Pahath Moab through the family line of Jeshua and Joab. There were 1,254 from Elam. There were 845 from Zatu. There were 760 from Zakai. There were 648 from Binui. There were 628 from Babai. There were 2,322 from Asgod. There were 667 from Adonicum. There were 2,067 from Bigvi. There were 655 from Aden. There were 98 from Ader through the family line of Hezekiah. There were 328 from Hashem. There were 324 from Bezai. There were 112 from Haref. There were 95 from Gibeon. There were 188 from the men of Bethlehem and Nedipha. There were 128 from Anathoth. There were 42 from Beth Asmaveth. There were 743 from Kiriath Jerim, Kephira and Beerath. There were 621 from Ramah and Geba. There were 122 from Mikmash. There were 123 from Bethel and I. There were 52 from the other Nebo. There were 1,254 from the other Elam. There were 320 from Haram. There were 345 from Jericho. There were 721 from Lod, Hadid and Ono. There were 3,930 from Sena. Here is a list of the priests. There were 973 from the family line of Jediah through the line of Jeshua. There were 1,052 from Amur. There were 1,247 from Pashur. There were 1,017 from Haram. The Levites belonged to the family line of Jeshua through Cadmiel through the line of Hodaviah. The total number of men was 74. The musicians belonged to the family line of Asaph. 
The total number of men was 148. The men who guarded the temple gates belonged to the family lines of Shalom, Ader, Talman, Akab, Hatida and Shobai. The total number of men was 138. Here is a list of the members of the family lines of the temple servants. Zia, Hasufa, Tabod, Karis, Sia, Padan, Labana, Hagaba, Shalmai, Hanan, Gadel, Gahar, Riaya, Rezin, Nakoda, Gazim, Uza. Hadifa here is a list of the members of the family lines of the servants of Solomon. Sotai, Sofereth, Perida, Jala, Darkon, Gadel, Shepathia, Hadal, Pokereth Hazabiam, Amon the total number of the members of the family lines of the temple servants and the servants of Solomon was 300. Many people came up to Judah from the towns of Telephone Mela, Telephone Harsha, Karub, Adon and Amur. But they weren't able to prove that their families belonged to the people of Israel. There were 642 of them from the family lines of Delea, Tobiah and Nakoda. Here is a list of the members of the family lines of the priests. They were Habiah, Hakaz and Barzillai. Barzillai had married a daughter of Barzillai from Gilead. So he was also called Barzillai. The priests looked for their family records. But they couldn't find them. So they weren't able to serve as priests. They weren't clean. The governor gave them an order. He told them not to eat any of the most sacred food. They had to wait until there was a priest who could use the Urim and Thummim. The priest would use them to get decisions from the Lord. The total number of the entire group that returned was 42,360. That didn't include their 7,337 male and female slaves. There were also 245 male and female singers. And there were 736 horses, 245 mules, 435 camels and 6,720 donkeys. Some of the family leaders helped pay for the work. The governor gave 19 pounds of gold to be added to the temple treasure. He also gave 50 bowls and 530 sets of clothes for the priests. Some of the family leaders gave 375 pounds of gold for the work. They also gave one and a third tons of silver. All of that was added to the temple treasure. The rest of the people gave a total of 375 pounds of gold and one and a fourth tons of silver. They also gave 67 sets of clothes for the priests. The priests and levites made their homes in their own towns. So did the musicians, the temple servants and the men who guarded the gates. The rest of the Israelites also made their homes in their own towns. The Israelites had made their homes in their towns. In the seventh month. Act 17. Paul and those traveling with him passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia. They came to Thessalonica. A Jewish synagogue was there. Paul went into the synagogue as he usually did. For three Sabbath days in a row he talked with the Jews about the scriptures. He explained and proved that the Messiah had to suffer and rise from the dead. This Jesus I am telling you about is the Messiah, he said. His words won over some of the Jews. They joined Paul and Silas. A large number of Greeks who worshipped God joined them too. So did quite a few important women. But other Jews were jealous. So they rounded up some evil people from the marketplace. Forming a crowd, they started all kinds of trouble in the city. The Jews rushed to Jason's house. They were looking for Paul and Silas. They wanted to bring them out to the crowd. But they couldn't find them. So they dragged Jason and some other believers to the city officials. These men have caused trouble all over the world, they shouted. Now they have come here. Jason has welcomed them into his house. 
They are all disobeying Caesar's commands. They say there is another king. He is called Jesus. When the crowd and the city officials heard this, they became very upset. They made Jason and the others give them money. The officials did this to make sure they would return to the court. Then they let Jason and the others go. As soon as it was night, the believers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. When they arrived, they went to the Jewish synagogue. The Berean Jews were very glad to receive Paul's message. They studied the scriptures carefully every day. They wanted to see if what Paul said was true. So they were more noble than the Thessalonian Jews. Because of this, many of the Berean Jews believed. A number of important Greek women also became believers. And so did many Greek men. But the Jews in Thessalonica found out that Paul was preaching God's word in Berea. So some of them went there too. They stirred up the crowds and got them all worked up. Right away the believers sent Paul to the coast. But Silas and Timothy stayed in Berea. The believers who went with Paul took him to Athens. Then they returned with orders that Silas and Timothy were supposed to join him as soon as they could. Paul was waiting for Silas and Timothy in Athens. He was very upset to see that the city was full of statues of gods. So he went to the synagogue. There he talked both with Jews and with Greeks who worshipped God. Each day he spoke with anyone who happened to be in the marketplace. A group of Epicurean and Stoic thinkers began to argue with him. Some of them asked, what is this fellow chattering about? Others said, he seems to be telling us about gods we've never heard of. They said this because Paul was preaching the good news about Jesus. He was telling them that Jesus had risen from the dead. They took him to a meeting of the Areopagus. There they said to him, what is this new teaching you're giving us? You have some strange ideas we've never heard before. We would like to know what they mean. All the people of Athens spent their time talking about and listening to the latest ideas. People from other lands who lived there did the same. Then Paul stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus. He said, People of Athens, I see that you are very religious in every way. As I walked around, I looked carefully at the things you worship. I even found an altar with to an unknown God written on it. So you don't know what you are worshipping. Now I am going to tell you about this unknown God. He is the God who made the world. He also made everything in it. He is the Lord of heaven and earth. He doesn't live in temples built by human hands. He is not served by human hands. He doesn't need anything. Instead, he himself gives life and breath to all people. He also gives them everything else they have. From one man he made all the people of the world. Now they live all over the earth. He decided exactly when they should live. And he decided exactly where they should live. God did this so that people would seek him. And perhaps they would reach out for him and find him. They would find him even though he is not far from any of us. In him we live and move and exist. As some of your own poets have also said, we are his children. Yes, we are God's children. So we shouldn't think that God is made out of gold or silver or stone. He isn't a statue planned and made by clever people. In the past, God didn't judge people for what they didn't know. But now he commands all people everywhere to turn away from their sins. He has set a day when he will judge the world fairly. He has appointed a man to be its judge. God has proved this to everyone by raising that man from the dead. They heard Paul talk about the dead being raised. Some of them made fun of this idea. But others said, we want to hear you speak about this again. So Paul left the meeting of the Areopagus. Some of the people became followers of Paul and believed in Jesus. Dionysus was one of them. He was a member of the Areopagus. 
A woman named Damaris also became a believer. And so did some others.